when the railroads come through in uh, 1900 and the train started running in 1901. About all that was here before then was the Rowe Ranch. And Alfred Rowe came over from England and he established a ranch 300,000 acres. And the first people who settled here were the railroad maintenance people. And the minute they started settling here, then Alfred Rowe donated a section to the town of McLean and started selling lots and small farms and ranches. restored some things, but uh, of course, the biggest problem with restoration is trying to bring it up to code. See, at the time of Route 66, there were no building codes. So we're very good shape school-wise and have a very good school system. And uh, we, uh, one year we're big in football, the next year we don't have anybody. That's because of a population drop. It's just, uh, we're a close-knit town. I think we have wonderful people here. I've never known of a, anyone that needed help that did not get it. Route 66 was established in 1929 and was finally paved through McLean in about 1934 or 5. And of course the town just grew by leaps and bounds as the traffic picked up. Uh, especially during the war and the automobile come of age. So we kind of think that the Route 66 era, as it was building, was our most important part of history here. But uh, it also meant our end, because when I-40 came and bypassed us, the big interstate passed because there just wasn't room to go through the towns without just moving everything in town. See? So uh, they had to move outside of town. At that time, we had approximately 44 businesses listed in the telephone book. And uh, within the first year, 22 of those businesses had failed and closed up. So it was uh, Route 66 is responsible for our boom. And yes, it was responsible for our bus too. In about 1990, Barbour Collectors of America, they're scattered all over the West, approximately four or five hundred of them, and they wanted to establish a museum on a well-traveled route. And this building happened to be available. It had been a, a brassiere factory working a hundred women for 20 years. So we made a deal with the city to lease the building and establish the Barbour Museum at the same time, we learned that the Texas Route 66 Association did not have a, a, a real association, and we had some artifacts, so we established the Texas Route 66 Museum. When the uh, survivors of the Civil War got back home in Texas, all our country was covered up with cattle, wild cattle. There was no fencing at that time. So there was a great need for a barrier to help fence property. Well, the first wires were made in blacksmith shop, mostly by cowboys and landowners. And once it was established that it was okay, then of course, everybody made their own bar bar. I'm gonna patent this and I'm gonna get rich but they it all made by hand. Well, you just can't make very much bar bar by hand. Even though there were 850 patents and we collect 2,000 kinds of wire, it finally boiled down to 20 or 30 wires that were, could be built by machine. Uh, 
World War II affected McLean community a little more so than it did some communities. And all of a sudden, during the war, we ended up with a prisoner of war camp just uh, a mile and a half from town. And this all of a sudden, one morning, a train stopped on the railroad on Main Street and they unloaded prisoners of war still in their German uniform. All walked out and people from town drove up to see and uh, it was just one long stream of soldiers. That was probably the rudest awakening to the war that you could imagine for a small town. We had very little trouble uh, from the prisoners because they were just all young people, 18, 19 years old. Well, when they were building the camp, there was uh, quite a few men worked out there with the construction. My dad was one of them. He was a soldier in World War I, stationed in Belgium, Germany, France. He learned a few German words, and when the prisoners came, he could say a word or two to them, and he uh, developed a rapport with them, you know, and uh, even after the prisoners went back home, there were some that wrote to him. Well, we are the typical American community. Everybody knows each other. And if you talk to anybody at least 15 minutes, you'll find out your cousins. And we've tried to retain our history. I'm sorry for the pun, but, and my name is Fish, but if I lived anywhere else, I would be like a fish out of water. So that's all I have to say. <laughs>